Hello everyone. Today we will be speaking about fibrillatory waves in ECG, which is a common feature of uh, atrial fibrillation. So, uh, before going to fibrillatory ECG, we should know what is normal ECG looks like. So, normal ECG is that there is a you can see there's a P wave, small P wave, and then they have this. This is a R wave. This is RS wave. That is QRS wave, and then followed by a T wave. So normal sinus rhythm or uh, normal sinus ECG, normal ECG should have all the waves. That is P wave, then QRS wave, and then there is T wave. Here similarly P wave, QRS wave, and T wave. So there should be everything. So in case of uh, atrial fibrillation, atrial fibrillation occurs basically because of a rapid contraction of the atria. That's that's why it is only a flickering type of movements and with a rapid contractions, but not the contraction is not severe enough to cause a wave pattern. That's why the P wave is absent, but it may sometimes produce what is called as fibrillatory waves, which is commonly seen in lead two and lead V one. Here you can see it only in the V wave, where you can see this pattern, which you can see here, is the up and down pattern, and this is a QRS and up and down pattern. Is what is called as fibrillatory wave. Okay, so that's what is called fibrillatory. So again, next thing is fibrillatory waves are of two types: uh, atrial fibrillatory waves and uh, ventricular fibrillatory waves. So if uh, fibrillatory waves arises from atrium, it is called as atrial fibrillatory wave. If it arises from ventricle, then it is called as ventricular fibrillatory wave. Again, atrial fibrillatory wave is divided into two types: that is fine uh, of fine atrial fibrillatory waves and coarse uh, atrial fibrillatory waves. So, what is mean by coarse AF? Coarse AF is that if the FA amplitude is more than one mm, what do you mean by one mm in ECG is the small one small square is called as coarse. If the FA FA amplitude is less than one mm, then it is called as fine AF. So, well, I can show you here. Uh, so, this you can see here. So, this is what is called as a coarse uh, coarse AF. Where you can see it, there is a small square. There is another small square. There is almost two small squares it's occupying. That is more than uh, two mm. Of that, that's why it is called as a coarse fibrillatory wave. Again, you can see here uh, this is a fine fibrillatory wave. There is a small uh, fibrillatory wave. This is not P wave. The fibrillatory waves, which you can see here, they are all small, but it is not occupying uh, even a small square, and that's why it is less than one mm, and it is called as fine fibrillatory waves. So, where do you see coarse atrial fibrillation? Is that coarse fibrillatory atrial fibrillation? What is its significance? Is that it indicates the atrial enlargement. So if your atria is enlarged because of any pathology, the most common being the rheumatic heart disease. In rheumatic heart disease, if there is mitral stenosis, there will be what is happening is the left atrial enlargement. And this enlargement causes what is called as a coarse atrial fibrillation. So thus, if you have a large enlargement of the left atrium, so there is very less likely that key that uh, atrial fibrillation will, will get reverted uh, with uh, cardioversion. So it is most likely to be persistent. Unless and unless you have uh, reversed the cause of atrial dilatation by a balloon valvotomy in case of mitral stenosis, that is the opening of the stenosed valve with using a balloon, and that is what you have re reversed the pathology. That's why the atrium can again become normal, and that's why atrial uh, fibrillation can be again reverted back to normal. Similarly, uh, all this pattern it mimics atrial flutter. Atrial flutter, what we say is a seesaw pattern. So see here, this even this pattern is what is there. There is a seesaw pattern here. You can see here. Okay, it looks like that, but it is persistent present only in the lead V1 and uh, only in the lead 2. Uh, and moreover, uh, atrial flutter, it more, more likely it presents with what is called as a, it's a fixed block. Like if you get a 3P wave, there will be one QRS. So persistently, there could be 3 is to 1, uh, uh, 3. Every time there will be 3 waves. If we have 3 is to 1 AV block, there will be 3 P waves followed by QRS. Here you can see there is a lot of fluctuations here, so which is very unlikely with atrial flutter. Though atrial flutter can also present with if you have atrial flutter with variable block, you may present with similar pattern. But uh, it is mostly seen in the inferior waves uh, in case of atrial flutter, that is lead two, three, and AVF. Whereas in case of uh, fibrillatory waves in atrial fibrillation, it is most commonly seen in lead V one and lead uh, one and lead two commonly. Okay. Similarly, uh, what are the other features of coarse AF is that since there is an atrial enlargement, there is high chances that blood may stay there and uh, that's why there is high chances of formation of thrombus and that may get embolized. So more chances of embolism when compared to fine AF and it is more commonly seen in uh, rheumatic heart disease. Since it mimics atrial flutter, it is also called as a flitter or flutter fibrillation. Next is the fine AF which is most commonly seen in elderly people and most commonly associated with a degenerative atrial fibrillation which carries a very good prognosis for cardioversion. So if you cardiovert or you have started on treatment, there is high chances that it's AF may revert to normal sinus rhythm. 
So here again, you can see this is the fibrillatory wave. You can see the small uh, the fibrillatory waves you can see, which is uh, not even occupying us one small square. So that's why it is a fine uh, AF. Next, coming to ventricular fibrillatory waves, it is again divided into fine and coarse. So what is ventricular fibrillation is that it's basically a chaotic rhythm, basically originating from the ventricles. Like it's similar to that atrial fibrillation where you hear only the ventricles uh, just flicker. It doesn't even contract properly. It just uh, keeps moving a little bit at contracting, not even a proper contraction. That's why there is uh, not much of active uh, contraction activity, which is seen. And there is no particular pattern for that. Uh, so there is no organized depolarization. As a result, there is no effective uh, myocardial contraction and there is no pulse. Okay. There is no normal waveform, so you cannot see in this ventricular fibrillation, you may not be able to see a normal P, Q, R, S, and T. So it's a it's very well vague uh, ECG, which is a chaotic, like uh, it comes with uh, different, different patterns, like uh, different patterns, which is not uh, form, corresponding to a single wave or something. So again, it is divided into coarse and fine. Uh, so what do you mean by coarse VF is that any uh, ventricular uh, fibrillation, which is of uh, more than 3 mm, that is... Uh, more than three small squares is called as coarse ventricular fibrillation. So here you can see this is the uh, ventricular pattern and you can see here how many there are one, two, three, four, five. There are almost five small squares. That is more than three small squares. So that's why it is coarse ventricular fibrillation. Where if any uh, amplitude waves is less than three mm, here you can see there's some contraction activity, but it is like almost one or two, hardly one and a half uh, squares is being occupied. And that's why it is called as fine ventricular fibrillation. So what happens is fine ventricular fibrillation is very more dangerous than coarse ventricular fibrillation because what happens is that key initially uh, when uh, the patient is going, uh, if heart is, time is failing or not able to contract properly, uh, initially it starts to contract. There's some electrical activity. That's why you get uh, these high patterns here. As in, an, if uh, immediately if you do not give the treatment or reverse the cause for which ventricular fibrillation has occurred, if you don't reverse it, the ventricle starts failing more and that's why there will be less uh, electrical activity. That's why the amplitude also decreases to less than three, which is called a fine AF. So initially all ventricular fibrillation starts as a coarse VF and then it progresses into fine VF. Okay. So, is, so similarly, fine ventricular fibrillation is even more dangerous than coarse because there is even less contractility, contractility of the myocardium. Usually when a person experiences ventricular fibrillation, it initially starts as coarse ventricular fibrillation and then it persists to fine fibrillation. And if you do not reverse the cause, it may again progress into asystole, which is a flat line without any electrical activity. Uh, hope you have liked my video. Uh, if you if you like my video, uh, please uh, do subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Akif Beg. And if you have any comments or if you want any other videos on a particular topic, do let us know in our comment box. Thank you.